Welcome back to the Chaos's podcast. On today's show, we have a very special guest. This guest is the original singer for the heavy metal band Slipknot, the only singer for Painface, and he has just dropped a single with us and Jeffrey Nothing called Breaking the Fallen, um, uh, distributed by Blood Blast Distribution and Rail Records. He's also on tour with uh, Wayland Revis, Chaosis, Sin Soto and Piston Fist in October through Australia and New Zealand. Please welcome to the show, Anders Kolsefni. Yeah, good to be here. Awesome. So uh, we have a uh, bunch of questions that we fielded from your Facebook account uh, from the fans. Um, we're just going to fire some of those at you. Um, Sounds good. So, so the first one uh, that came through was, uh, are you still living in Des Moines? Um, I'm in the Des Moines area. I'm kind of uh, north of Des Moines a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'll see vicinity. Nice, nice. Uh, and who uh, is your biggest musical influence of all time? Oh, geez. Uh, most likely, I'd have to say Paul Gray. Right. Uh, he stepped into my life, and my whole outlook on music completely changed. But there's been a lot of other influences along the way, but he's probably the biggest thing. Sure, sure. Um and uh, this is a little bit more of an in-depth question, but uh, could we have a, a brief timeline of the bands that you've been in in your career? Well, as it turns out, I made up a list. Oh, beautiful. So I could stop pretty quick. Okay. We got uh, Vex, Inve Catharsis, Slumlord, Body Pit, Slipknot, Pain Face, On a Pale Horse, Vice Grip Throttle, All That Crawls, Pain Face Again, and then Guardians of Dystopia. Nice, perfect. So, yeah, yeah it's quite an extensive uh, list there. Um, and so, touching on some Slipknot stuff, um, what did you initially want to achieve uh, when you started Slipknot? Well, to be honest with you, I wanted a career. I wanted to be able to pay my bills and take care of my family uh, before anything else. Uh, the fact that it turned into what it turned into kind of, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to be doing something musically that I really wanted to do. Um, once we saw how many good local musicians were involved and interested in providing their own unique spin on things, it started becoming more of uh felt like something that could be dominant nice and dominant in a way that around here you know that's the way bands think of is they think locally they think where they're at right now they try to be the best band in their own little town i was just hoping to be the coolest band in the town sure and, sure. Uh, and uh, i got out before they quite got to the next big step because we never really did play very many shows sure overall sure. We didn't do much touring Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, well, that kind of sums that up. Um, there was uh, quite a lot of interest in the uh, the cage that Joey is sitting in uh, on the cover of Mate Feed Kill Repeat. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There's rumors about that being part of your stage show oh, as well. We, we wanted to make that part of the stage show, but it was too fucking heavy. Sure. The thing weighed, weighed like eight, 900 pounds. It was sharp. I got cuts on me that I can still see them from that thing. I'm surprised nobody got tetanus. Uh, we built it to look painful, and it was as painful to move as it was to, you know, to the eye to look at it. But um, we, Sean and I just sat up, sat in his uh, garage and just started slapping scrap steel together with his welder and saw what I uh, thought of so, the most grotesque looking thing with scrap stuff that we have laying around we could with pieces that would slam down with hinges with spikes so joey when he was sitting in that thing for the picture really we somebody could have really fucked him up bad if they would have let loose some of them things because they would have tagged him in there and he would have been running out the out the side <laughs> and then the picture would have been something totally different <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds horrendous um so moving on from that um what what is the connection with crows um and what are the rumors around this jar of death? Oh, God, that thing. The pickle jar. Yeah. Okay, so the crows thing, um, 
It was simply uh, Joey taking some little scene that Paul and I saw one day and then just starting making something out of it. It's the weirdest thing. It's amazing somebody is able to do this. But we were talking about dropping Paul off after practice one night, and it was dark, and it was in in the fall, so there were crows everywhere. Blackbirds just took up into the sky when my headlights went around the corner. It was really eerie. It it was freaky as hell. They were everywhere. They were like, oh, my God. Well, Paul told Joey about it. So then Joey just started going around going, crows, just out of the blue. He just started doing that everywhere. Sure. Paul found a dead crow in the in the alley one day. Or not Paul, uh, Sean did, and he put it in a pickle jar from his uh, uh, <laughs> from the bar, <laughs> and he carried it around with him to every practice in my basement, to every show, everything that everywhere he went, he carried this decaying crow in this jar, and the thing we just kept monitoring its decay over the period of time. It was disgusting. It just right. slowly start gooping down you know and he dare people to smell the jar and i i think some people did i stayed clear the hell away from it sure that's the jar of death that's and it still exists right to this, to this day it still exists right right that's uh that's uh pretty uh harrowing um yeah i don't want i don't want to see it again but i know it's alive right right um, and there was uh, a question there about uh, would you be open to contributing vocals on a current Slipknot song if the situation sure. arose? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice. If awesome. Contact wanted me to do something. Yeah, why not? Cool. Fun. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Nice. Okay, so uh, and do you have a favorite Slipknot song since you exited the band? To be honest with you, um, I'm going to say Wait and Bleed, the very first one that hit right after I left. And it's the one that I would have thought that I would have hated the most. Right. Just because of my circumstances. But that song, I, I when I heard it, I'm like, that's it. Yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done that like that. So kudos to you guys. So Wait and Bleed. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Um, and... So this just uh, is about the feeders and the Australian tour. Um, how many feeders will there be with you on stage to play Mate Feed Kill Repeat? Oh, there are going to be feeders. There are going to be. There's just going to be some feeders, man. There are going to be feeders like you've never seen feeders. You know what a feeder is? Personally, <laughs> yeah. But you don't know what a feeder is. Dude. Nobody. Uh, yeah. Nice. There's going to be a nice, nice. <laughs> Cool. Uh, okay, well, that's uh, pretty cryptic. Um, so we'll move on. Um, there's been a lot of requests for um, Pain Face albums um, and Pain Face material. Uh, can anybody get copies of this this stuff? I have actually just uh, talked with my uh, the Pain Face guitar player from the original of the Fleshcraft CD today because he's in my new band, and we... Uh, I said, hey, do you have any more of those Fleshcraft CDs left? Sure. Like, yes, I do. I go, good. Save one for me, will you? Nice. I'll, I, I will get get something out to you, and uh, I can't believe I don't have any left, but I guess I didn't assume I'd ever need any more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But here we are. The, the demand is there. Um, and yeah. so there's, and there's obviously, I mean, like you will be sick of this question too. Are there any, are there any shows planned for US, UK, Europe, etc.? Nothing planned yet, but I'm not going to say nothing will happen because I really hope something will. Nice, nice, awesome. I think that there'll be lots of fans uh, out there um, really stoked for that news. Um, and then uh, how do you feel about kicking us in New Zealand and Australia? Oh, my God. that that's I can't wait. I can't wait. Everybody I know down here is jealous as hell of me just for going there, nice. regardless why I'm going there. Yeah, sure. And... Uh, half the people don't think i'm coming back <laughs> <laughs> well you're most welcome to stay down here that's for sure i mean there's uh yeah the the hype down here is real and everyone's super pumped um and feel super privileged too that you're coming down to do this especially just for just for them too so 
Um, huge kudos there. Well, that's pretty much all the questions we have for you today, buddy. But um, thanks very much for for, for uh, coming on board and um, answering some of these fan questions. And um, we'll see you soon in October. Zen, thank you for making this possible. I appreciate it, brother. Awesome, brother. And just to recap, Anders has dropped a collab single with Chaosis and Jeffrey Nothing available on all streaming platforms and YouTube now. He's also on tour through Australia and New Zealand through October, where he will be touring the Mate Feed Kill Repeat album in full. Um, and you can grab your tickets to that at newmetalmayhem.com. We will leave a link in the video description. All right, catch you next time.